We're with Heather Villeneuve, and Heather, you were a graduate of St. Lawrence College in what? 2011. And what did you graduate? Which program? Medical laboratory technician. And what does a medical lab technician do? We're basically an assistant to the lab. All of the diagnosis that happens in either a hospital or a clinic, it is, um, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, I assist everything that happens in the lab. I could do anything from taking blood to uh, sampling urine. Uh, it could be anything from turning on machines to printing out results. Uh, it's, it's very minimal patient care, but it is a very big role in the hospital. Now, did you graduate at the bottom of your class, or did you have any issues with your schooling? Did you fall on your head or anything like that? Absolutely or? no issues with schooling. It was uh, pretty easy to fly through it, and the mm -hmm. clinical placement came very easily to me. Anything hands-on was very... Um, and you had a pretty good score from your clinical placement, right? Yes, yes, somewhere in the high 90s. All right. Now, th in your class, the, there, were, there were three people from our Cornwall area that attended. Mm -hmm. You're the only one that hasn't found a job, right? Yes. Uh, the two others got jobs right after they finished their clinical placements. Now, is there, was there something special about them that they got jobs and you didn't? Is it just luck? Did they have any extra skill sets that you don't? They are able to speak French, whereas I am not. Okay, so even though your name is Villeneuve, you, you, you're not functionally bilingual? No, I was not raised with any French abilities. Okay, and you're born in Cornwall? Born and raised. And which high school did you graduate from in Cornwall? St. Joseph Catholic Secondary School. Now, when you went to St. Joe's, did you, was there any focus or did people counsel you that say, to say that if you wanted to work in Cornwall, you would need to have a certain level of proficiency of French? No, there was no warning as to how difficult it would be to get a job afterwards in this area. Um, our high school didn't teach very many French classes. You mm -hmm. just had to have three and you were able to graduate. And how long was your technician's program and how much did it cost you by the time you were done? The technician program itself is a year, but I actually started in the technology program. So I did a year and a half of that, mm -hmm. had to drop out because of money issues, but then I went into the technician program shortly after. That rung me up around $35,000 in school debts, which now I'm having troubles paying off. And what do you do now for a living, if I could ask? I pump gas at minimum wage part-time. So does that make sense to you to, to, to have the skills that you do to have achieved the success of graduation of your college program? I feel highly disappointed from the Cornwall and surrounding area that I'm being discriminated against for a skill that I don't necessarily need. Now, did the college warn you that you had to speak French to get a job in the area while you were attending? No, they did not. And are you going to be able to find work or are you going to be forced to move? I'm pretty sure I'm going to be forced to move out of the Cornwall area. Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're born, you grew up here, this is your home. Mm -hmm. All of my family is here, all of my friends, and I'm going to have to leave everything if I want to be successful in my life. Now, a lot of young people leave here by choice. You want to stay. You've, you've invested in the community by attending college, which you just said was over $30,000. Mm -hmm. You have skills that are in demand and are needed, especially with our growing health care crises. Yet you are not being allowed to work in your field because not of your skills, but because of the language issues. Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't. It upsets me extremely. I've been used to being discriminated about my appearance my entire life, but for a skill that I wasn't raised with, that's disappointing. You're talking about your piercings? Absolutely. Yes. But you don't wear your piercings when you apply for a job, do you? When I apply for a job, I look like a normal person. They all come out. Now, when did you start your job hunt? Shortly before I finished my clinical placement because I knew that the time was coming up where I was going to have to start taking over my life and figure out where I was going to go from here. So the job applications started going out before I even finished my uh, placement. Which would, which would be when roughly? July last year. So July of 2011. Yes. And we're now in October of 2012. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many job applications have you sent out or applied for? Over 50. Over 50? Over 50. And that's for the surrounding area and a little bit further out. And you just, you're being stonewalled? Yes, absolutely. I do callbacks, um, and a lot of the time they either say that I'm not what they're looking for or I don't have enough experience or qualifications. 
Now, when I ask about qualifications, the only thing that comes up is that I didn't mark bilingual on my application. Okay, so that it's so. actually been verbalized to you? Yes, yes. Nothing in writing or anything, but it, it has been told to me. Yeah. Now, you're, you're, to your knowledge, the two students that graduated in your class who were from the area and that achieved employment, you said are bilingual or, or...? Yes, yeah. They have more abilities than I do, I guess, but I still have the same skill set in everything that right. we learned together. So, so they didn't have extra schooling, they simply were bilingual? Yes, they were raised differently. To work in a non-frontline position? Mm -hmm. Does, how does that make you feel? Very upset. You know, I have very minimal patient contact. Uh, extensive conversations aren't needed to be carried out. If anything, the most I'm doing is taking blood from a patient, which takes less than five minutes. Have you looked at taking French courses and upping your French skills? I have, but to be honest, I don't believe that I should have to further my education to do what I originally wanted to do. I don't believe that I should have to go out of my way to learn something that isn't needed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have never come across somebody who can at least speak enough broken English to get the point across. Do you have any broken French? Barely. Barely? <laughs> Barely. I can, I can understand some when people, people are talking to me, but I, I wouldn't be able to talk back. Do, do you think it's fair of employers to demand at least some French? Minimal French, absolutely. You know, being able to introduce yourself to somebody, mm -hmm. but um, that I can do. Mm -hmm. But I don't need to have extensive conversations. It's so you'd rather leave home and take a job in, in another market than up the French skills locally? I'm feeling like I would rather leave home now, yes, yeah. due to the amount of discrimination I faced. Do you think it would impact, if, if you did succeed and gain employment, do you think that would have an impact on your future and for advancement and opportunities because you weren't bilingual? Absolutely. Um, if I were to get a job here, you know, it would lift my spirits completely. It would um, help me start my life. I wouldn't have to live in a basement apartment anymore. Mm -hmm. I would actually be able to buy groceries and make my proper car insurance payments and be able to fill my tank. You know, it would make a whirlwind difference. No, I completely understand. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you and, and, and hopefully we'll We'll see the response to this. Thank you so much.